Hey, Lipavoni people, John Houck here, and uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, trapped air, spongy pulls, and the Lipavoni sneeze, and uh, what that's all about, what it is, and uh, um, what causes it, and what you can do about it. So, uh, the concept is that when you raise the uh, lever, and uh, you hear the water kind of rush into the group head, and then when you go to pull your shot, as you're pushing down, if you let go, and, and you'll feel this, uh, you don't even have to let go, but you'll feel it, you'll, you'll feel like you're squishing something, and if you let go, the lever will indeed pop back up. And even at the end of your shot, when you've completed the pull, you uh, feel as though you need to hold the lever down for a while. Uh, if you let go, the lever will pop up a little bit. And uh, if you remove the portafilter uh, right after you pull a shot, you experience what's called the Le Pavoni sneeze, uh, where the portafilter may even be uh, uh, pushed out of your hand as you, as you un, uh, unlatch it. And it may uh, fly down and, and break some porcelain um, and spray coffee grounds just about everywhere in your kitchen. Uh, take a picture of it because it's uh, sometimes artworthy. Uh, but it's something that you want to avoid. The other thing that you might notice is when you have this kind of a spongy pull is that the volume in your cup uh, of espresso seems to be a little bit less than when you don't have a uh, spongy pull. So what is that? What is uh, causing that? So let's go ahead and take a look inside uh, the uh, uh, Generation 3 uh, Le Pavoni, and I'm just going to focus in on the Generation 3 today. Um, ground coffee down here. Uh, here's your piston that is raised up and down by the lever. Uh, here's your boiler. Uh, steam on the top part of the boiler, water down here, and the pressure in the boiler uh, forces water up through this uh, siphon tube into this chamber and fills the area uh, above the piston here. So when you raise the piston, you are pushing some of that water back into the boiler, which is fine, and you're drawing a new volume here and what goes into this area well there's no water because these uh, these val these uh, gaskets here prevent the water uh, that that would want to come through this uh, um, upper part of the piston down below so you're not actually creating a vacuum you're creating a slight vacuum but what happens is that vacuum is immediately filled by the air in the room uh, coming in through the port of filter, going through the porous coffee grounds, going through the shower screen, and filling this area. So I'm suggesting to you that when you've raised the piston just about all the way, this portion here is all air, and um, you should be aware that air is very compressible, very spongy, and so if you were to um, uh, you know try to squish air, it squishes just fine. So once you uh, raise the piston all the way and let open up the side port here, um, and you can kind of see how that uh, port has this little channel and the hot water has to kind of go up here, down and around and through there. Uh, I explained why that is in, in other videos, but uh, for now, let's just kind of um, focus on the hot water coming through here. Um, it uh, goes into this area down below and what happens to the air? Well, much of the air is displaced by the water. As the water fills this up, the air then kind of finds its way down through the, the porous coffee and, and through the through the porta filter. But there's a fair amount of air that's still there, and it just kind of goes uh, in, in this area here. And that's what gives you the spongy pull. So when you're starting to uh, lower the piston a little bit, then um, you're going to see or uh, feel that, that spongy pull uh, happening. There's this concept of flash vaporization that I want to now jump into, which basically is a, a, a phenomenon of hot water, that if hot water is of a certain temperature, a high enough temperature, and there's a pressure drop from one area to the next, that water will turn to steam. So the water that's in here is hot, and it's under pressure. Uh, the boiler pressure is, let's say, one bar uh, above or one atmosphere above uh, ambient uh, pressure. So as the water comes through this hole, it depressurizes, and then flash vaporization occurs, which means um, each drop of water uh, turns to steam, a uh, percentage of the water turns to steam, and it turns into, it occupies um, uh, a lot of area. So for example, 
um, a, one drop of water could um, occupy 25 times its volume when it turns into steam. And I've got a little spreadsheet here that shows that if the water entering through that port is 100 degrees Celsius, none of it turns to steam. But if the water going through that uh, port uh, is, let's say, 100, let's say 107 degrees Celsius, then each drop of water turns into 25 parts of steam. So you have 25 parts of steam to one part of water. Um, and if uh, you're a little bit hotter, it could be even a 50 to 1 uh, ratio. So as that temperature increases above 100 degrees Celsius, you get more and more steam generation. And I'll, I'll put a link to the spreadsheet in, in the video. Um, so that steam generation then creates uh, a, a kind of a, a violent expansion of the water into steam. That steam then displaces the air in here, pushes the air down through the dry coffee grounds. And then as the chamber continues to fill, that steam condenses back into water. And because steam condenses uh, directly back to water, there's no air. And so then the area um, underneath the piston is uh, pretty much all water. So in summary, what I'm saying is the hotter the water is that goes through this port here, the less spongy your pull is going to be because more air is going to be displaced. So how do you get rid of spongy pulls? Well, um, you could uh, take this uh, piston and raise it up and down a couple of times to pump uh, water back into the, um, uh, in into the uh, boiler. And then you draw in hot water from the boiler back into this area and you do that a few times or maybe even raise this up all the way and let hot water all the way through before you attach the portafilter um, and do all kinds of things like that to heat up the group head. Um, you can let the machine sit for a while once you turn it on so don't draw a shot right as soon as it reaches boiler temperature but allow uh, the thermal mass to heat up. Um, the downside of having hot water go through this hole and uh, having really hot water uh, for brewing your espresso is hot wa the water that's too hot will over extract your coffee and give you uh, quite a bit of uh, bitter flavors. So there's this kind of trade-off between do I want um, a, a spongy pool with cooler water and <clears throat> less bitter um, the spongy pool because there's air trapped in here there's less water in this area so you have less volume to draw for your shot. Um, uh, or do you want to go with a hotter group head, keep things up, um, have a more flash vaporization of the water, and then um, brew with a slightly hotter temperature and uh, not have a spongy pull. And so those are kind of the trade-offs. Um, I, I want you to be aware of that. And um, some people will say, well, isn't there another way to get the air out, you know, to brew with cooler water and, and, and another way to get the air out? And, uh, well, yeah, there are, uh, there, there, there's a way to do that, and we'll talk about that in another video. That's really not the point of this video here at all. So um, I hope that's been informative, and uh, um, I'll see you again next time. Bye.